Okay, uh, in this particular position with this piece, what we're going to try and accomplish is referencing some type uh, another test. Uh, if you were to weld, uh, you know, everything I'm really uh, concentrating on seems to be in the 6G position. And if you can master this position, you can weld just about anything. That's why they give a test in this position. It's an all-position weld. It covers you for uh, horizontal, vertical, flat, overhead, uh, as far as a, a round item goes. Now, there are other tests with stick rod on plate. Uh, and you take a position. Each, each plate is in a certain position because it's a flat, not in essence two-dimensional. But when you talk about something round as a piece of pipe, uh, one of this test qualifies you for all those It's a different application. So what we have here is a coupon, a test piece, same thickness, same material. And the piece is actually drawn up on me. And i am got it in the position. I've got the camera up on it. What I'm going to do is film the route with the lens on, film the hot pass, and then we're going to stick rod the rest of it out. And what I've got is the rod barely, it's tight, barely fits in there. And uh, that this is done so you can see what do I do if I'm taking a test or I'm welding on a piece of material and I can't get my rod through the bevel to get down like we've normally been welding. Now you can come in here from the bottom and you can well from the bottom and if you couldn't get that in there at all you would absolutely have a tough time tougher time let me put it that way pushing this in and getting this material the weld to actually uh, be enough on the interior of the pipe welding this way it's not as easy as welding from inside the bevel shooting the gap whether you walk the cup, whether you use some of the method I've already taught, uh, it's a lot easier to be able to take your rod, stuff it through inside the pipe to get to wherever you want to weld in this area. And then when you come up here, you can't put it anywhere inside as well. It's too tight. So I want to show you what happens if I get in a bind somewhere. I can't cut the piece apart. I don't have 332 on hand. All I've got is 1 8 or bigger, let's say. How am I going to overcome this little uh, minor setback? It's not a problem. It's just a, it's just something you've got to uh, kind of be mindful of. Uh, you'll you'll run into this situation if you weld long enough, guaranteed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through. I'm not going to be much talking with me on the film. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just. What I'm going to do is thin my tacks like we normally would. I've got three tacks in the form of the peace sign with no tack on the bottom whatsoever. I am going to take the grinder and I can either thin this out, which I will on both sides because it's tight on the top because of three tacks with none on this side. That's why this side is still a little open and this side is extremely tight because it drew. So what I'm going to do is Thin this out on the back side. I told you before that TIG welding is very forgiving and that you can get away with opening up the bevel with a grinder. Uh, so I'll just thin that out with my grinder. One thing when you grind the bevel on TIG, you want to try not to leave a big landing on the surface of the bevel. When I say landing, I'm talking about the area in here on this flat area when you stick rod you absolutely flatten this edge out to the size of the thickness of about a nickel American currency the nickel or a coin but when you dig well you don't want a landing you want a knife edge so when you grind you want to make sure if you tear into the bevel with a grinder and you always want to use a 1 8 inch thick wheel or skinnier. You don't want to leave a super landing in here and a shoulder that you've got to contend with to try and fuse the interior of the pipe together because this is not at all like welding with stick rod. Or 
you can go on this tack right there and I can take my torch and I can just heat that little part of the tack on this side up with my torch rather than thin it out because that is the keyhole side of my tack and I can open that up with my TIG rig so I can shoot my wire in at least at that point but because this is closed completely too I'm just going to use my grinder and thin that out and that's how I'm going to overcome this. I'm not going to worry about this because it's open enough even if it was skinnier than that I'm not worried about it because all I want to do is get my rod to the weld surface area where I'm making my fusion and begin the welding process but because I can't do that and I don't like pushing it in from the bottom I could lay it in there like that but look when I go to it, it's it's biting the rod I'm not doing that on purpose it's actually biting the rod because it's tight so I want you to just to walk you through what I'm going to do in the experience I'm just going to go ahead and start filming. I'm not going to do a lot of talking and instruction while I'm welding on this piece from start to finish. And then I'm going to voice over on this uh, before the final product is done. One thing else, the another thing I want you to see is that when you're watching this on your screen, it's going to appear that the coupon was up and down as in a vertical weld, but it is not. It is in a 6G and how I'm going to overcome that for you to see a better visual is I'm going to just go ahead and roll my camera like so the uh, amazing features of technology and the equipment that I'm using and then I can go ahead and zoom in and do whatever I want get a good shot of the bevel so forth I can altercate my uh, camera position and so when you watch this at home or on your computer it's going to appear as though the weld is going to flatten out it's going to look like it's going straight across your uh, screen and I just wanted you to know that it is not it is actually in the 6G position you can see it coming out in the 45 but it won't appear as such when I'm welding it I just want to let you know that I'm not cheating on you that uh, it's the amazement of technology and the positioning of my camera because I don't want you to have to cock your head to one side the whole time you're watching this if I was to leave this thing flat you might want to sue me for neck cramp and I, I just can't take that chance I know you're nice and all but you know I don't know you that well and I'd like to trust you but you know how the world can be so anyway I'm just kidding anyway I wanted you to know that that's going to be uh, like so so let me go ahead and put the lens on, get set up, and we'll start from there.